The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. Let me tell you this amazing story. I heard today from my Rebbe, Rameir Shalom Rabinovich. He tells me over this story that, uh, that wow. <clears throat> there was a great rabbi. He lived about 200 years ago. His name was Rabbi Avram Abish Mi Frankfurt. He was one of the Gedolim of Europe 200 years ago. He was an Adam Gadol Me'od. Rabbi Avram Abish Mi Frankfurt. Zechet Tzadik Lebracha. Zechuto Yagen Aleinu. Listen to this. Rabbi Avram Abish was walking in the streets in Frankfurt. And he sees a guy who was a very wealthy man. And he sees the guy is standing at the side of the street and he's broken and he's crying. Mamash bidmaut, he's crying. So Avram Avish runs up to the wealthy man, to the rich man. He says to him, why are you crying? The rich man says, Rabbi, I had my entire fortune wrapped up in a wallet, more like a money bag. And it was a very expensive, special style money bag that had so many pockets and compartments that it was able to hold all types of denominations of money. And in each pocket, I had a different amount of denominations of money, of diamonds, of jewels. And it was in different pockets, wrapped in different ways, literally with simanim, from all different style of denominations of money and, avon, and, 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 and beautiful diamonds. And I lost it. It's gone. I don't know where it went. I've been looking and looking for days. I can't find it anywhere. I looked everywhere. I retraced my steps from days beyond. I lost it. It's gone. I lost everything. I have nothing left. The guy was broken to pieces. Mamash. Rabbi Ram Avish told him, Relax. Don't worry. A little bit Amunam Bitachon. Hashem is going to return it to you. Tell me. I want to help you. I'm going to go out and try to help you find it. I see you're broken. What type of money bag was it? He writes it down. What were the denominations inside that money bag? So I know if I find it, I'll see the simanim. I'll know it's yours. He tells him, in this pocket there was a roll of 20s, and in this pocket there was a roll of 100s, and in this pocket there were bills, and in that pocket there were diamonds. And he told him exactly, exactly the way every single denomination was rolled, tied, and placed. Ramav Ramavish told him, relax, don't worry, I'm going to help you find it. Rabbi from Abish goes out. Guys, listen, open your hearts. <laughs> the tzaddikim of yesteryear. Rabbi from Abish goes out and he pulls together all the wealthy men in the town of Frankfurt. And he gets everybody to donate a certain portion of what this guy once lost. And then he runs and he finds a merchant that's selling the exact duplicate same money bag and he buys a money bag who looks exactly like the one that the guy lost and he starts taking together all the money that he took from the wealthy people and he ties him exactly bidiyuk to the detail the way the guy described what his money bag had and all the simanim on the inside and he puts each one in the proper place in the proper pocket and then he takes the diamonds and puts them wrapped together in the pocket of diamonds and he literally knocks it out step by step, pocket by pocket, till he has a perfect duplicate replica of exactly what this guy lost. And the next day he comes to the broken rich man and he says to him, you're not going to believe it. Hakerna, recognize, right? The way Yehuda said to Yaakov Avita, right? Hakerna, recognize. Is this it? And the guy looks at it and his eyes open up wide. And he says, I, I, I think it is. That's, that's my money bag. 
He grabs the bag. He opens it up. He starts going through every single pocket to see maybe someone took something. Maybe something was missing. And he goes through pocket by pocket by pocket. He says, Rabbi, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. You found it. Rabbi from Abish had mamish. Ah, a smile from ear to ear. The man gives the rabbi a hug. He says, you're a walking Kiddush Hashem. Mamish, you me. You brought me back to life. You gave me my life. I mean, I, 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 I'm telling you about the, the thoughts that I was having of ending it. Of checking out of life. The guy was, he was contemplating suicide. Imagine. He said, you gave me everything back. My life, my money, my wealth, my, my purpose. The next day, this wealthy man is home and he's going through his stuff. And suddenly, under a pile of clothes, he finds his lost money wallet and he opens it up. And he looks at the money wallet that Rabbi Avram Abish the day before gave him, found. And then he looks at the money wallet that Be'etzem was his, that was really in his house, under the mumble jumble of stuff, under a pile of clothing that he never found nor looked at. And he says, what? What's going on? And then it hits him. Oh, oh, that Sadik, that Sadik, that Sadik, that Sadik. What did he do here? Oh, what did he do? What did he do? This rich man goes running through the streets with the two wallets. Kefel <laughs> Kiflayim, with the two wallets. And he comes running up to the rabbi and he says, Rabbi Ravavish, I know what you did. I know what you did. How did you tell me you found my wallet? Rabbi Ravavish said, I didn't tell you I found your wallet. I said, Hakerna. Recognize. Did I say I found your wallet? Never a word of Sheker ever left my mouth. My whole life. That's what he told them. I never said a word of Sheker my whole life. I didn't say I found your wallet. I said, Hakerna. Recognize. Does this look familiar? And you said, yes. Okay. Wonderful. I took care of your problem. I never said I found your wallet. He says, wow. Unbelievable. He says, Rabbi Avram Abish, tell me, why did you do this? Why did you do this? He says, Rabbi Avram Abish, I'm going to tell you. Because when I was walking in the street, and I walked up to you, and I saw you broken to pieces, I saw you crying, I realized that you lost a lot more than just your wallet. You lost yourself. I realized that before I try to find your wallet, before I try to return to you, your wallet, there's a bigger mitzvah here. I got to find and return to you yourself. That's a big loss. I had to return to you, you. Hashem teshivem le'achicha. Return to your brother. Vahashevoto lo. You remember that pasuk? Hashavat aveda. But you know what the pasuk says? Return him to himself. Because he's so broken about the loss that he lost himself in the process. You lost yourself. You lost your, you're an aveda. You lost yourself. It was a bigger mitzvah to return you back to yourself than to return your money wallet back to you. I first had to return you back to yourself. I had to return you to you. I had to make you a mensch again. A ben adam. He says, once I went out and got the duplicate wallet with all the duplicate money and brought it back to you, you know what that did for you? It brought you back to yourself. It brought you back your composure. 
It allowed you to come back to yourself and calm down. And now you could relax. You could breathe again. Now, once you were able to find yourself, now you were able to open your eyes. You were able to see life again. That moment you were able to see Bore Olam again. That moment you will be able to become a person again. That's the moment that you'll be able to find your wallet amongst your own things. Because if I didn't do that, even if your wallet that was lost was sitting on your dining room table right in front of your eyes, you would never have seen it because you were ice mensch. You have to hear what I'm telling you. I don't, you're not hearing what I'm telling you. This is, this is not stam what I'm telling you here. This is a davar gadol. Sometimes in life, people hit situations that they lose themselves. And they forgot even about the situation because they reacted so tremendously broken that they ended up losing themselves more then what's to be lost in the situation of the problem at hand? Says Rabbi Avram Abish, I needed to first get this guy back to himself. I had to get him to find and refine his composure. I had to get him to reopen his eyes and look at life again. I had to get him to reopen his eyes and look at Hashem again. Now that he's looking at Hashem, now he's able to reconnect to Bore Olam. Now he can start having Emunah. Now he can start having Bitachon. Now he can find his wallet. Because now he's reconnected. Now he's a Ben Adam again. He's a Mensch. Psh. What does David Amelech say? Mishimua ra'a lo yira. Don't lose yourself in the moment. So many times people hear something, they go nuts. They lose themselves in the moment. They say the things they shouldn't say. They react in the ways that they shouldn't react. And then later on when they finally come back to normal, oh, do they regret it. Oh, how did I say what I said? Oh, how did I do what I do? did? Oh, well, well, what was I thinking? And the answer is, you weren't thinking. You checked out. There was no discipline. There was no composure. The giants, the Gedolim, they were able to somehow, even in the toughest of moments, hold their discipline and composure, and they did not let go of Shiviti Hashem Lenegdi Tamit. Yes, you're right. This terrible thing is going on. And how am I going to deal with it? I don't know. But I'm holding on to Boreola. And therefore their reaction was measured. Therefore by them, they didn't lose sight of the moment, of the situation, and definitely not the one that can help them. Because once a person is ice mensch and goes out of their kelim, they disconnect to everything, including... Hashem. And who's going to help him now? How's he going to save himself? How's he going to get out of this? How's he going to get out of the black hole? Somebody has to come and mamish, pull him out of the tachtiot, mamish, the, 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 I don't want to say what, of Gehenam. Distract yourself. Talk to yourself. Breathe. Everything's going to be okay. I have Hashem. Talk to yourself. Tell yourself, let me just get through today. Let me just get through today. It looks like my world is coming to an end. We should never know people that go through sometimes certain situations that the world looks to them black. I see sometimes people going through divorces. Sometimes people who mourn over the loss of parents, God forbid, or, or children, God forbid. We should never know from these things. But it looks like life went black. 
They don't have to deal with it. I'm not, I don't know if I can ever get out, come out of this. No. Take a breath. Don't go there. Hold your composure. Don't disconnect. You disconnect from reality, you disconnect from Bore Olam, it's going to pull you out. Great people, even in the most difficult moments, were able to hold their composure. And this is an amazing thing that somehow or other, Rabbi Ram Abish, who saw this wealthy man fall to pieces and realized on the guy where he's going, he's going to nowhere good. This guy was falling into Shol Tachti. The guy said, he said, I was ready to commit suicide. I was ready to check out a life. He did something brilliant. He came up with this ruse to just snap him out of it, even for a minute. Even for a minute. He brought him back for a minute. He gave him a moment of consolement. A moment. That's all it takes to snap the guy out of the shahor. A moment. To come back, to distract them, to let them believe that everything is okay. That minute he pulls himself back together, brings back his composure. That's the moment he reconnects with Hashem. Hashem, ah, you're still there. You're with me. And at that moment, he can go back and fix his problem. And that's when he finds the real wallet. Because without that, the wallet could be staring him in the face, he wouldn't see it. The Yeshua could be staring the guy in the face, he won't see it. And he'll throw in the towel. It's an amazing idea, this concept. Let me get through today. Let me distract myself for a moment. Let me hold on. Let me reboot. Myself, my system, a find a moment of calm so I can reconnect so that I'll continue to hold on to Borei Olam because he's my only shot at getting out of this. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.